Hey everyone, it's Jack from WhatCulture.com. Now, before we get into all the ups and all the downs from this week's SmackDown Live, I just want to say, Adam Blompier, I want to wish you the very, very best of luck in your upcoming wrestling match with Rampage tomorrow at Refuse to Lose. Good luck, mate. Really good luck. Now, to start the show, we saw Bray Wyatt versus Kane, and you might think, yes, brilliant, a great chance for Bray Wyatt to look strong uh, in the build to his impending match with Randy Orton. But that's not quite how things went down. Instead, uh, Orton appeared on the Titan Tron in the middle of the match, distracted Bray Wyatt, cheeky bastard, and then uh, Bray decided, I've had enough of the match, I'm going to go and find Randy Orton, awarding Kane the win via a countout. I'm going to give this a down, unfortunately, because I think it would have been better had Bray beaten Kane, preferably clean, uh, and then gone to look for Randy in the post-match shenanigans. Next up, we had Alexa Bliss versus Nikki Bella with Carmella on guest commentary. Uh, the match was quite a short one because Carmella got involved uh, calling Nikki Bella a thirsty Kardashian wannabe, which is a, a humdinger of an insult. Nikki obviously didn't take too kindly to this. Uh, she hurled Alexa Bliss into Carmella, and Carmella then got involved with the match, and it ended in a DQ. This was all pretty good stuff. It carried on the feud between uh, Carmella and Nikki, and it also continued to keep Alexa from losing uh, clean in the build to her match with Becky Lynch. I'm giving that an up, but then we unfortunately had the old Teddy Long switcheroo. Teddy wasn't actually involved, of course, but uh, we had the two faces versus the two heels as Becky ran out to make the save. She was paired with Nikki. We had Alexa and Carmella. This match wasn't a great one for one simple reason. And the only reason I'm giving this a down, Becky Lynch got pinned. Way to make your new SmackDown Women's Champion look strong ahead of her first pay-per-view title defense, guys. Cheers. And not only did she get pinned, she got pinned by Alexa Bliss. This had been built so well. Up until now, Becky was looking strong. Alexa was looking strong as well. Now Becky looks like a bit of a loser. And you don't want Becky to be a loser. Well, I don't want Becky to be a loser anyway. Next, we had a match that on paper looked like a surefire down, but I'm actually going to give it an up. It was, it was a tag match between the Vaude Villains. Yes, they're still there. And the Hype Bros. Yes, they're still there too. The Hype Bros went over clean. Uh, Mojo Rawley in particular looked very strong, got the hot tag, ran riot. And it, uh, the crowd was dead for this, understandably, because the two teams haven't really been given much in the way of attention over the past month or two. But... At least it gives them something to do, and at least it builds towards a storyline for at least one of the teams, because as the Hype Bros were celebrating, the Ascension came out of the ramp and stared them down. That's probably going to be a pre-show match on Sunday. Probably not a very interesting one, but at least, at least they're doing something. I'm going to give this one a cautious up. Now we get to my favourite part of this week's show, and my favourite part of the past few weeks' shows on SmackDown, the feud between The Miz and Dolph Ziggler. This was incredible. The Miz aired a sort of mocking this is your life video package chronicling Ziggler's rise from Kerwin White's caddy to a member of the spirit squad to his whole hi I'm Dolph Ziggler handshake all the terrible gimmicks he's had to deal with over the years and all the losses and all the disappointments he's faced it was a really scathing video and one which I'm sure probably hit Dolph quite hard in real life as well but it it was the sort of uh in-depth build to a feud that you really expect in this day and age and I who would have thought it was Miz and Dolph Ziggler that were going to deliver it, but they did, and it was fantastic. Not quite done with this segment yet, though, because then, to add even another layer of brilliance on top of it, Miz brought out Kenny and Mikey from the Spirit Squad. They danced around in the ring a bit. They spelled out the letters D-O-L-P-H. Kenny struggled to spell them a little bit, I feel, if you watch it back. Uh, and then Ziggler fought off an attack by both men and, you know, looked strong going into the match. Whichever way that match goes, it's going to be intense and, I think, really good. Maybe a highlight of No Mercy unquestionably, unquestionably, this was an up. Now we get to the match that we've all been waiting for, dream match of mine for many years, Jason Jordan v. Jey Uso. Um, it, it didn't last very long, understandably. Jason Jordan got the win with like a reverse roll-up kind of thing. And then um, the Usos went full heel, went to injure Jordan's leg. They've injured Gables in the past, obviously. And Heath and Rhino ran out to make the save. Perfectly fine build uh, to the match at No Mercy. It was a very simple build as well, but I've got no complaints. I'm going to give it an up. And it's another match that I'm looking forward to at the pay-per-view, which should be very promising. Now it's time to visit the two or three segments between Randy Orton and Bray Wyatt that we saw backstage. Uh, Bray went a-looking for Randy. A-looking, yes, I said that. Uh, Bray went a-looking for Randy, and uh, Randy trapped him in a metal container. We don't know why. Uh, was he just going to leave him there to starve? Was that the implication? Brave babyface move? Leaving your opponent to starve to death in a container? I'm not sure what it was for. Maybe it was just to prove that Bray Wyatt isn't, you know, 
supernatural being. He can't just escape from situations at, at will. But then it turns out he can, because then we saw CCTV footage from inside the container of Bray talking to Abigail. Is Sister Abigail finally going to make an appearance? I certainly hope so. It seems like it could be a brilliant boost to his character, which, as we know, has been ailing for quite some time now. Orton then went to the container to check on his, literally his captive, his prisoner, opened the container, why it wasn't there. Randy demolished the armchair in fury and then stalked off looking all, oh, Randy, what voices in my head. It was an up. I like this. I like how we've got a new element to Bray Wyatt's character. It, it'll all be for nothing if he loses at the pay-per-view, of course. But for now, I'm giving this one an up. Now we get to easily the worst part of the show where the do I start with this? It was ridiculous and it helped neither man. Jack Swagger v Baron Corbin in a singles match. Uh, Jack Swagger got Baron Corbin in the ankle lock and as Corbin was clawing his way towards the bottom rope, the referee deemed that that constituted a submission. He thought he was tapping on the canvas even though he blatantly obviously wasn't. To make matters worse, one of the commentary team was like, he tapped, he tapped, and the other one was like, no he didn't. Everything was, it was mayhem, it was anarchy, it was chaos. It was a down. Swagger's a babyface, why would he be happy with that win? He, he ran out of the ring like loving it. Corbin now looks like a, a screwed over babyface when he's the heel. This was awful, can't emphasize that enough. I'm sad I can only give it one down. Motherfuckers. And finally we close the show with another up thankfully. The ups have won. Uh, it was a three way promo slash brawl between AJ Styles and his two number one contenders. Number one and number two contenders. Two number one contenders, Dean Ambrose and John Cena. Uh, I'm not going to go over this, it's, it's pretty much the same as what we've seen in the past few weeks, but all three guys raised very valid points, or should I say both guys raised valid points because they gave Cena no time on the microphone, which was harsh but refreshing. Uh, they all brawled, hit their finishers on one another, and it was Dean Ambrose who stood tall at the end. Nothing wrong with this segment. The ups have won. Happy days. Look forward to no mercy. What a... What a close to that take that was, Jesus Christ. So yes, as I've said, the ups have won six to three. SmackDown continues to dominate its older brother in the in the sort of critical ratings, if not the TV ratings. Um, yeah, it's all looking good for the blue brand. Here's to a fantastic pay-per-view on Sunday, hopefully. And here's to a fantastic match between Adam Blompier and Rampage tomorrow at Refuse to Lose. I, I don't envy the man. I don't envy him. Rampage is... He's getting, he might kill him. Thanks for watching. That's all the time for this week on Ups and Downs. I've been Jack from WhatCulture.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Jack underscore the jobber, and I will see you soon. This Thursday, for the first time on iPay-Per-View, WCPW refused to lose. Alberto El Patron, the Mexican sensation El Ligero, the Kiwi buzzsaw Travis Banks in a triple threat for the WCPW Internet Championship. Mr. Brexit, Doug Williams, takes on the grandson of a plumber, Cody Rhodes, answering Nixon and Neal's open challenge for the WCPW Women's Championship, Kimberly. The Iron Man, Joe Coffey, takes on Minoru Suzuki. Rampage versus Adam Blumpier in a street fight. Joseph Connors will defend his WCPW Championship against Martin Kirby. And the local hero, Joe Henry, will take on the American hero, Kurt Angle. WCPW refused to lose. Thursday, 7.30, 2.30 Eastern, only on iPay-Per-View.